Hello friends, this video on chemical bonding part 2 is brought to you by exampeer.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1. So there were various theories on formation of molecules. As I told that experimentally, it is found that atoms combine to form molecule, right? This is something which they, which uh, chemists have found experimentally. Now, nobody had answer why they combine. So they gave a lot of theories and theories is nothing but a tested and testable concept. That means they have tested this based on a lot of experiments and that can further be tested based on the experiments. And they help us explain and predict the behavior of atom and molecules. So these are just something uh, which they have tested over a period of time, a lot of experiments, and they help in uh, predicting the shape of molecules. They are right and wrong. No, no theory is hundred percent correct. So every, each and every theory has some flaws. Nobody, I mean, none of the theory is hundred percent correct. We'll we'll uh, learn some four theories now. They are useful also. They are useless also because uh, some theory breaks at some point. Some theory works at some point. So we'll. We'll explain these theories. So the first set of theory was based on the empirical approach that is by observation. So the first theory by observation was given by uh, Lewis in 1916 and please note the Bohr model came in 1912. This was the time when uh, we got a fair picture of uh, atom. Till this point the quantum model was not there. The quantum model for atom was not there was not there. Till this time only Bohr model was there and with that uh, in mind and with sort of observation, Lewis gave one approach, one theory to uh, find the structure or predict the behavior of uh, molecule. Then uh, this theory had merits but out of demerits also because the structure was, uh, this theory was not able to give the exact structure of the molecule. So uh, a new theory was uh, proposed in 1940 with the same uh, approach, experimental approach, a lot of experiments were done and they came up with a theory and this theory was Vesper theory. We'll explain uh, these things in details. And then uh, the quantum uh, model of atom came and quantum became a, uh, a big uh, hit in the market and everybody uh, believed in quantum approach. And quantum uh, approach is more about uh, attending stability because if you see uh, the last chapter which we've explained, the whole quantum model of the atom is all about uh, atom behaving in certain way just to attain stability, right? So uh, in quantum model says that energy is like a stress. It doesn't say but I'm just telling you energy is like a stress just for you to understand it. So, for example, in our life, you want to lose the stress, the examination stress, family stress, any kind of stress. Everybody want to lose the stress by meditation or going out uh, on a vacation, going on a movie. So, stress is something nobody wants. Similarly, energy is similar to stress. Atoms, molecules, they always want to reduce their energy. They want to reduce their stress, right? To to become stable. Lesser the energy, more stable you are. So, everybody want to lose the energy. And that's the basic uh, principle of uh, the quantum model. And these, with this approach also, they, the chemists proposed two approach. One was the valence bond theory in 1927 and the other was the molecular orbital theory in 1932. So these are the four theories we have, two based on the empirical approach by observations. But then I told the quantum approach become uh, the head thing and now if you see we can uh, explain or can understand the atom and molecules better with quantum approach and those there were two theories that came uh, based on the quantum approach right so I told a lot about theory let's let's understand what the theory is in chemistry so theories I told is nothing but a statement a set of statement of principles that is devised to explain group of facts or phenomena and that has been found by repeated testing, right? And it is widely accepted. And these theories can also be used to make predictions. 
please note theory is nothing but a set of statements or principles that is found based on my experiments by testing and that can be used to make future predictions for example i'll tell you a very simple example let's suppose five students got some less marks in class 11 in 2009 way back like suppose three four years back some five students got less mark the principal asked for investigation and the teacher did some investigation they found that all those students who didn't study they got less marks so they gave a theory the teachers gave a theory that student who study less gets less mark so this was a theory in 2009 right so based on experiments based on the experiments that uh, based on the data they had that uh, five students they got less marks and they took this data again for 2008 also seven also let's suppose and they found that the theory they gave was the student who study less gets less mark and this is a very common theory everybody says your mom or dad must be saying you that you study you don't study you get less marks because this is a theory actually which was been proven true period of period and this is a very uh, very e easy to prove theory then what happened in 2010 five students again got less marks or let's suppose six students got less marks this time doesn't matter but in this case one student studied hard but still he got less marks so this theory failed for this six student right so the, again the teacher here because they are the one who is giving theory they did all this investigation investigation and they found that student who study less they'll get marks or who, uh, who is not well on the exam day will also get less marks because this particular sixth student who got less marks this time was a studious student he was among the toppers but he was not well on that examination day and he got less marks so he changed the theory this was a theory one this became theory two right the theory got improvised again the same thing happened in 2000 let's suppose 11 this is the next year let's suppose again some five students again got less marks but here they have seen that one student studied hard and he was well also but still he got less marks so again the teacher did the investigations and they studied and they found that student can get less marks if he study less maybe the first case he is not well on the exam day or his concepts are not clear sometimes for subjects like science physics chemistry maths if your concepts are not clear even if you study hard you may not get good marks so this is the theory correct so this is i'm just giving a real life example where how the theories are formed so you have some data some student got less marks on that data they give a theory and this theory is true for the future data also with this they can predict if you're not studying you will get less marks again and they keep improvising in this theory if you see right in 2010 uh, they they change the theory 2012 maybe this theory is true for everything now maybe they covered all the scenarios so that's how theory is all about in real life we give theories based on data and that theory is useful us useful for predicting the future results also similarly in chemistry world also based on experiments or um, uh, analysis they give theory this theory also helps us in finding the structure or uh, the chemical properties of different molecules correct thank you visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos try free online tests get the best quality study materials study from the best tutors and mentors and much more thanks once again